Hey everyone, it's Harry Frankfurt, and today I'm going to be filming my what I eat in a day video for uh, weight loss recovery while maintaining low carb, high fat, or a ketogenic lifestyle. So if you like eating disorder recovery videos, eating videos, or what I eat in a day videos, or if you're going keto, anything really, uh, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get notified when I upload stuff, because that's going to happen. I promise. Never take my promises about uploads ever, seriously. <laughs> now, to begin, I want to just let you know that obviously at the moment, my biggest eating disorder recovery challenge, so to speak, is making sure that I eat my three meals a day and that I'm getting a decent amount of calories because majority of my eating disorder behaviors and patterns surround around restricting not only the time that I eat in and the amount of calories that I eat and then all of the control loss and compensation and all sorts of things that happens afterwards. So this video is focused mainly around my breakfast and dinner and lunch isn't that big of a deal. I try and get as many calories as possible into my breakfast so that I know that it'll be more difficult for me to miss my calories later on in the day because sometimes I will do silly things and then silly things happen but first things first let's start with my everyday essential not food which is coffee. <laughs> Two scoops of Macrona and then I add the water and then I pull out my scales. I weigh everything that I eat not so that I can cut down but so that I know how much I'm eating and it is still an element of control but I need to have that otherwise if I don't know I will watch myself start restricting again. So I weigh out 25 mils of cream. I use cream because it is the high fat low carb version of milk and it tastes better and it makes coffee amazing and without it Makona actually tastes really bad and I love Makona but without cream I don't know how people drink black coffee with Makona. Normally I just drink black coffee, but Makona needs to have something. So that's why I use cream. After that, recently I have been making a ketogenic kind of cereal, I guess. It is just yogurt and nuts. When I used to eat cereal, I used to like my muesli really like muesli-y and less like milky. So I have a yogurt based muesli that I make every morning and it's actually quite therapeutic for me so let me just run through the list of what I add to my cereal every day. Now I'll just let you know that you will be watching me make this but I will read out the list as of my fitness pal so it may be totally out of order I apologize. I start off with the yogurt about 100 grams and then I add sugar-free drinking chocolate which is just cocoa and a little bit of stevia and then I've got uh, black and white chia seeds, 10 grams of that, linseeds, 11 grams of that, whole organic coconut flakes, and then 30 grams of mixed nuts. So it's 20 grams of, 10 grams of the coconut flakes, because you'd be surprised how much volume is in that. Um, and then 100 grams of the yogurt, 11 grams of linseeds, 10 grams of the black and white chia seeds, and then I've been adding Brazil nuts, the organic ones, and I chopped them up so that they're kind of not as humongous in my muesli. <laughs> and then I just add that all in a bowl and mix it up, and that's my breakfast, and that means that I have a whole lot of calories, if you need to know, that is, with the coffee, 683 calories all done before I even go to work. And the reason I do that is, like I said, because then I just bring a tin of fish. Uh, on this particular day, I had the Smoked Kippers in Brine by John West, and I have the whole tin, which makes 241 calories. And I basically like to know that I'm getting majority of my calories done early in the morning so that I have energy to go to work and do all of those things. And because then, I don't have to worry about it later in the day. Uh, it kind of really helps me. Mainly because if I don't eat a well-rounded breakfast, then I won't be eating and then I'll get scared about what I'm allowed to eat and then that's when I fall into my disordered eating habits. So that is why breakfast is humongous for me and I know a lot of people would look at that and be like, that's so much food and it is because then I have that tin of fish and I'm still working out on this particular day. I think I did legs. No, Friday. I did hit? I can't remember what I did, but I'm still training um, and I'm doing hundreds, which is going to be another video that's coming up and then on, yeah, I'm doing lots of things, so get excited, but back to what I eat in a day. For this particular breakfast, I didn't have the coconut in my fitness pal yet, so here is just some footage of me showing you literally how easy it is to just grab a food, scan the barcode, and add how much you ate, because that's just what I did then, so I mean... It's easy. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> to work, I brought the tin of kippers with me, which is just mackerel, which is a really nice fatty fish. 
These ones are smoked, so if you don't have a big office cafeteria like I do, then it's gonna stink up the room because it kind of stinks up our apartment sometimes. <laughs> then, like I said, after work, I pretty much go straight to the gym and do a full hour long workout. And then from the gym, I walk home. So then I get all my 10,000 steps and I get a workout in. And then I was hungry, but I needed to do some kind of like meal. So I had a snack, which was two Vega stringers and one cheddar laughing cow. I love laughing cow cheese and I tried the cheddar ones just to get experimental and I didn't hate it, um, but I didn't know whether I loved it. I find that with some kids flavored cheeses, when they go cheddar, it, I, I don't know how to feel. So anyways, between the two of them, uh, two stringers is 124 calories and the cheddar laughing cow was 30 calories. So really just something to tide me over while I made my dinner because my dinner was a cooked dinner as opposed to another tin of fish or a handful of nuts or a bunch of cheese, which are all things that I will sometimes fall victim to because cooking is hard. But on this particular day, I did one of my cheesy broccoli and cauliflower mixes where you basically just get frozen broccoli and cauliflower, fry it in some butter and then add cream and cheese and seasonings. Really the most easy thing ever, but I thought that I'd teach you how in this video. So I start off with my snack. I eat that, and while I'm eating that, I measure out, it was 11 grams of butter. This is the low pack butter, because the Danish butter is superior to Australian butter, I personally think. If it was Swedish butter, it would be better again, but we don't have Swedish butter, so the Danes will do in this case. Then I went in with, what was it, like 115 grams of the broccoli and 175 grams of cauliflower. At the end of the day, the vegetables, you don't really need to weigh and measure them, because you could eat the entire bag and you'd be fine a little bloated and kind of constipated but you would be fine there's like it's just it's vegetables so then after that once they've been frying for a while I add some seasonings I use the sea salt the garlic powder and the onion powder I just eyeball that and get them nice and coated so that they are very crunchy. I feel like they dehydrate them and crunch them up. The more salt, obviously the butter. If you really wanna just go with the butter, crispy broccoli fry stuff, which is amazing, just add more butter and cook it down for a little bit longer. But after they've been simmering for a really long time, I added the 30 mils of Paul's cream and 50 grams of four cheese melt to the pan and then just chucked it all into a bowl and ate it all and then that was the end of my day. So for that particular day, uh, here you can see a clip of me going through and making sure that I had everything tracked for the day. And then I realized that I hadn't scanned my tuna, my, my, no, no, my mackerel, so I went back because I looked at it and I was like, I don't know if that's the right one. <laughs> so I went and checked. And then generally by the end of the day, I have a look at everything that I have eaten for the day and also have a look at my macros. On this particular day, I did go slightly over on my carbs, which was due to the yogurt and the coconut, I think, because yogurt is higher in carbs. And yeah, that's, that's everything that I eat in a day of keto eating for eating disorder recovery. I hope you enjoyed this and I'm gonna be doing a cheat day video where I eat all of the things that I've been craving, uh, almost all of the things that I've been craving, but most of the things that I've been craving for the last couple of months, and you will see that as my next video, along with a taste test of American chocolates, because I really went all out on this particular day. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, make sure you go ahead and subscribe, and you will see me in the next one, which is one of these boxes. So click those to make sure you are up to date with everything that I've uploaded, and yeah, okay. Bye!